All right. Welcome, everyone, to today's uh, Google SEO Office Hours Hangout. Uh, my name is John Mueller. I'm a search advocate at Google in Switzerland. And part of what we do are these Hangouts where people can join in and ask their questions about their, their website and web search. And we can try to find some answers for you. A uh, bunch of things were submitted on YouTube already. Um, so we can go through some of those. But we can also go through some of your questions first, if any of you want to step up and mention something that's been on your mind. Can I ask a web stories question, then? All right. <clears throat> do, do web stories follow the same sort of rules um, in the domain setup. So if we have uh, that content living at forward slash UK and then a bunch of web stories, uh, and then forward slash US, a bunch of web stories, is that the best way to handle that? Or can you just have forward slash web stories and Google will work out what the best audience is if we're creating AMP pages specifically for those? So for geotargeting in particular? Yeah, because yeah, we'll have uh, it'll be on a, a global site where we'll have US, UK, South Africa, Australia, et cetera. Would you have a central pool of those web stories, or would you do them at the domain, country domain level? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> OK. I don't thanks. know. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I, I think web stories are only shown as kind of this unique UI thing in, in certain countries. I don't know if that's in the UK, but it's, it's, it might be UK in the US, something like that. The Telegraph has it. So I assume, in fact, well, I think the Telegraph is one of the examples that they use within the. OK. So unless I'm going mad. OK, well, then may, maybe you're seeing them um, because we don't have them in Switzerland. So I, I'm just like assuming what they will look like. Um, but essentially, for all other countries, we show them as normal web pages. So they're. They're normal AMP pages, and we will index them like normal web pages. So that means any geotargeting that you have there for those pages, depending on where they're located, that would apply there as well. Right. But I don't know how that would apply for the situation when we show them as kind of that, that web story UI in, in Discover and in the search results. OK. But it couldn't hurt to follow a country level role, presumably, because if, if the country doesn't exist in web stories, let's say it's Australia or whatever, then it's not going to find it anyway. So it doesn't matter. Yeah. Yeah. OK. Um, yeah. I, I, I don't know. It's, it's also one of those things where, since it's a bit of a new UI, uh, I could imagine that there kind of watching out for how, how these web stories are used and how they perform. And if you have the same story for multiple countries, then it could be that it crumbs across as, oh, you're just republishing the same content right. multiple times. So that's kind of the, the unknown from, from my side. If, if it comes across as you're like republishing things or if it's purely tied to geotargeting. Right. I mean, it would, luckily for us, we can do geo targeting and unique content per country. But OK, as, cool. far, as far as I know, um, uh, I think uh, some of the product experts experimented with this a bit. Um, and I know somebody with, a, I think, with a UK site created web stories that got uh, displayed in US uh, uh, discover results, uh, because most of the traffic seemed to have um, uh, come from, from US users despite that being a UK website. Uh, so my, my guessing, I guess, is that uh, perhaps we should just treat them like a uh, normal blog post. Like if you have blog posts that are just like in English and are not targeting a specific audience, you wouldn't necessarily make duplicates for each kind of country version. You just have that blog post and that's it. Or maybe your commercial site is has different country or language versions, but you have one single blog and you keep that separate and just in one language or whatever it's easier. And Google kind of picks it up and shows it how how it makes sense for, for Google, basically. Right. I mean, ours is 
country specific uh, subfolders with country specific con this is for experienced gifts not the other site so it would be specifically for that country it's interesting yeah, how the it's telegraph about the ui not the actual uh, the um because as far as i know web stories do work they're just not being shown in the the, the ui is not being shown right. in specific countries but they themselves are still being indexed by google as far as right I know. okay yeah i i'll i'll double check with the web stories folks when when they're back okay i got a core web vitals question for you john I think I think it, okay. it, uh, it makes sense. I just want to understand the rationale behind it a little bit more. Um, so metrics like uh, LCP, uh, which is measured in time, so like three or two and a half seconds for good, um, that is dependent on internet connection, right? Like that that weighs heavily into that metric, right? So in you know, better developed countries with faster internet are gonna more likely have a better LCP than the same website perhaps where the audience is in a country with underdeveloped uh, internet connection. That That is accurate? That can happen, yeah. I mean, for for speed, the internet connection is is one thing, but the the way that the pages are built up is not purely tied to the internet connection speed. Uh, so that's something where. Chupa meu pinto, filha da puta. Okay. Let's hope this doesn't go too crazy. Um, sometimes we have, I don't know, these kind of like Zoom bombers drop in and do crazy stuff. So we'll see. Hey. Um, I may ask a very basic question, please. Sure. I am just so stuck. I am, am not as technical as all of you. I am um, using Google Sites, not Suites, and I made a website, and I cannot get. Um, I've enabled Google Analytics track to track the property, and I simply cannot get. I, I can't get Google to crawl the site. And when I get into Google's Google Search Console, it, I've auto verified the property. When I do a URL inspection, I get a message that the URL is not in property. I have to wait a couple of days, but it, that's been stuck for two weeks. I just wonder what to do. Um, my my recommendation there would be maybe to post in the the Webmaster Help Forum. Uh, so so Mihai is is one of the experts there. Um, but sometimes this depends a little bit on the specifics of your case. Uh, mm -hmm. So in particular with Google Sites, there is a kind of a weird situation with the way that the URLs are structured uh, in the sense that uh, it, it can be that you're testing a URL, which is one of those URLs that we don't actually crawl, uh, but which is something that you might see in the UI. Uh, so that's sometimes a bit. I don't know, quirky with Google Sites in particular. Okay. And uh, kind of going to the, the help forum, posting your URL there, usually people will be able to take a look and say, oh, you should have been checking the other URL instead of that one, for example. Oh, good. And which site is that? Which webmaster did you recommend? Um, it's the, what is it, Google Search Central help forum. Um, I can drop the link in, into the chat as well. Oh, that'd be terrific. Thank you so much. Sure. Hi, John. Uh, hi. This is Kiran. How are you? Hi. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm good. Uh, John, the thing is actually I found a fault in Google Webmaster algorithm bias for the software category. Is it possible to discuss uh, about that uh, personally? Already I spoken with your uh, representative side for India representative country manager. Regarding on this, uh, the results, what he said is not uh, satisfied more me. Actually, Google is a company to provide a solution for that. Um, for my category and uh, uh, the following results, what they said to me is not satisfied with that business. Can we discuss about this personally? Not in this chat room, because I lost. Uh, Yearly, for example, two 
250 million dollars i lost in my company due to the i think uh, you you can uh, <clears throat> you can understand can we discuss personally about this is it possible usually we don't set up one to one meetings so oh. that's okay. something which usually we don't do if there's something where you're running into situations with regards to maybe the the uh, monetized side of google usually you can reach out to a uh, what are they called uh, account manager uh, to kind of discuss that there. But especially when it comes to search, it's not that we would set up a one-to-one -one meeting with any company. It's OK. How to contact the account manager in India, uh, John? I don't know. Uh, that's something where you, you'd have to go through wh whatever monetized channel that you're working with. If you're working with Google Ads, then through okay. that, for example, you'd have to go. Or if you're using AdSense, for example, you'd have to go through that. Right, right. OK. Uh, then we can discuss uh, right now itself regarding on this. For e-commerce uh, platform business category people, the following search results are very good, right? So there is no issues for the uh, e-commerce uh, business end or news angles or in blog spots, OK? Bloggers for bloggers, like that. For software category, software publisher companies, like on a Filepo or Softpedia, like on a CNET, like for the for for that kind of category company, actually I launched a company called us on filecoffee.com, uh, 2014. Okay, I started and I started building with a uh, large enterprise to <clears throat> to publish a software for my country India. So there is no representative in India to uh, publish a software in India because software publishing is not an uh, easiest task. It's a very highly challenging uh, what is a challenging field, right? Right, for that I started. But due to Google BIOS uh, engine, the how the Google is seeing the, for the software category, uh, site told me about that. Uh, Google is uh, uh, seeing the category for them worldwide. Because anyone can be downloaded in, uh, throughout the world. Like an, uh, if I publish the software uh, in my domain means, even uh, Japan people also able to download the file. Or yeah, United States of people can download the file, right? Uh, right, John? Right. Fine, but the theme is actually in my country. It's a uh, second largest country, okay, downloading the software. So I, I started the company from India, but I am not getting nothing uh, revenue from here. So how you are going to deal, John, about this? Okay, so you're you're not seeing your site visible in the search results in India? Is... Yes, you are right. Yeah. Okay. My, my recommendation there might also be to go to the Webmaster Help Forum and post some specifics, in particular, some searches uh, that you see uh, when you're looking from India uh, to kind of highlight the, the issue that you're seeing there. And the folks in the Search Central Forum, they can escalate these if, they're, if there's something on, on Google's side that needs to, needs to be done. They can also give you tips with regards to what you might be doing, what you might do differently. Uh, with regards to geotargeting, with regards to kind of mapping the content to what the queries are looking for, uh, those kind of things. Uh, okay. But yeah. Actually, uh, yeah. they given us some of the uh, tips and for that to, to do that. Actually, they are recommending for an adverts. How much? Because I am a startup company. How much uh, uh, millions of dollars I can spend for the adverts? So is it I have possible no idea. to do that? <laughs> I have no idea how, how AdWords works. So uh, that's also something where it's like so sometimes when, when you're a new business, you, you do various things to get popularity and to kind of grow a little bit more well-known first. And that can include ads, but uh, ads is not something that we, we do from the organic search side. So that's something you'd have to kind of figure out separately. OK, OK. OK, John. OK, thank John, you. Can we just touch you? back okay. on my uh, core web yeah. vitals question again quickly? Thanks. Okay. So yeah, about, sure. just about the yeah. internet connection affecting the speed. Um, so basically, what I'm trying to understand, so I have a, a multi-national uh, site um, where the majority of the customer, or so a portion of the customers in are in North America, where there's better internet connection. And then a portion of the customers are in um, and underdeveloped, under, uh, more underdeveloped countries with a slower internet connection. It's essentially the same architecture, different content, 
but this the um, you know speed scores might be the same. But then because the internet connection is poor in in for for maybe South America, uh, I I have a poor or worse LCP score there. Um, so what? What can I do about that, or or what, what what's the methodology behind that? I guess um, the in in general, our idea with the score is to map where where your users are actually using your site from. Uh, so if users are primarily in in one location uh, where they have bad internet connectivity, you're kind of competing with other sites who are also kind of focusing on those users. So it's not that you have kind of a disadvantage just because you happen to have users with a slow internet connection. It's more, well, for those users, like those are the sites that are available. And like maybe they will come to you as well. Maybe they'll go to other sites. So it's a level playing field, basically, is what you're saying. Yeah. That's that's kind of the idea. Yeah. So it's not just like, well, this site focuses on users in the US and they have really fast connections, therefore they have good scores and we will rank them higher. Uh, it's more that, well, like depending where your users are coming from, we will try to rank you like that. So would you look at the ranking on a per country basis or or like uh, so like if it's a multinational site like that, the the US section, would that have a different kind of benchmark or I guess be against a different audience than I guess the, the other sections? Could be. So I it, so, so there are a few things that kind of play into that. On the one hand, we have to have enough data from the Core Web Vitals side to understand these segments. And if we have data for those segments, then we can apply that. Uh, whereas if we don't have a lot of data for your website, then maybe we'll just say, oh, the whole website has this one data point. And then it's kind of like all bundled together in, in that one aggregated data point. But if we have more data, and you'll see that in Search Console, if there, there are like multiple sections there with like number of URLs, uh, you can see a little bit more like, well, there's data for the US part. There's data for the South American part, for the European part. Uh, all of those things. And, and I section those different property or those um, different subfolders out into different uh, properties anyway. So I can use that data that way, then I guess. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And then and then just to further your, your point one more uh, with one more thing. What if a site uh, has no um, is not in the crux data set at all? How then does it get ranked or yeah? Yeah. I I mean we we run into this problem with all kinds of metrics. So that's mm -hmm. something where we kind of have to figure out um, how, how do we start, start the site off. And uh, that's something which, which you see not specific to the speed side, but which you also see with regards to, I don't know, lo lots of other factors, like around the quality of the site overall, uh, where some people will say, oh, there's this, like, this Google honeymoon period until Google has enough data for my site, uh, or I'm in the Google sandbox because Google is ranking my site lower than it should be uh, in the beginning until we have enough data. And uh, that's kind of reflected in there. It's not so much that we treat it like in a bad way or in a good way, but we have to make some assumptions. Mm. And over time, we, we should be able to collect data on that. OK, cool. That makes sense. Thanks so much. Sure. Hi, John. Hi. Hi, John. Uh, it's Deepak here. Uh, I'm from India. Cool. Hi. Yeah, yeah. I'm doing a job in an MCC company. Yeah. Uh, Actually, uh, my question uh, regarding a uh, basic uh, and uh, technical website uh, structure. Um, actually, I'm facing uh, uh, some issues uh, with my website. Uh, there is a regarding a uh, crawling and uh, indexing. Um, it's a bigliving.co.uk website. Um, I have changed uh, uh, website structure many times. But uh, still, I'm not able to uh, index my website in search engine. Uh, there are uh, basic, uh, some categories page are indexed, but uh, other pages like uh, filter pages and uh, internal sub pages are not indexed properly. So that's why I'm not uh, able to getting a good results. And uh, uh, the, this site is, uh, uh, we can call it enterprise website. 
okay so uh, can you please uh, please guess to me uh, what i have to do uh, with the, this website or structure uh, where i can yeah so it's it's hard to say without looking at the website in detail and so that's something where i might also suggest going to to the forum to get some some tips there um, but in general uh, changing the website structure makes it a lot harder uh, for us. So if you've changed the structure a few times already, then every time you change the structure, we have to understand a new structure. And that takes time. So finding a way to focus on one, one structure that you can keep for the long run, that's I think, is really important. Uh, so less fewer changes and more focus on one clear structure. Uh, the other thing that I think is important is uh, focusing on fewer pages as much as possible. Uh, so you you mentioned like filter pages, for example, uh, and if you can avoid having all of these filter pages indexed by setting them as no index, for example, uh, then we can focus a lot more on the actual detail pages. Uh, so that's something where when you look at your website. Maybe if, like, if you're seeing that Google is struggling with crawling and indexing, then think about which pages do you really, really care about, which ones are really important for your business, and make it so that search engines can really focus on those pages. Uh, so kind of limit the links to the other pages, limit uh, the indexability of the other pages so that we can really focus on uh, the smaller set of pages that, are, that you find important. OK, sir. Uh, one more question, please. Sure. Um, uh, it's regarding a URL structure. Uh, obviously, uh, we are talking about uh, recently a uh, website structure. But uh, uh, what do you think about uh, URL structure uh, means uh, root domain, uh, category, then uh, subcategory, after that, uh, product page? So is it a right URL? Yeah. I I think that's perfectly fine. Like URL structure, I, I don't have super strong opinions on that uh, because different sites make it in different ways. And usually, if you have unique URLs, it just works. But that's, that's a reasonable structure. Uh, that's also, like, like I said, something I wouldn't just change. Uh, so if you get advice from some other SEO and they say, oh, you should put dashes instead of subdirectories, for example. Uh, I wouldn't change that kind of thing, because it makes it much harder for us to understand your site again. So instead, kind of pick one structure that you, you're kind of OK with and keep that for the long run. OK, sir. Uh, oh, all right. And uh, uh, all right, sir. Thank you very much. I think I'm satisfied with your answer. Sure. Hi, Great. I have a follow-up question to that. Hi, John. Right. OK. Yeah. So today I would like to. <laughs> uh, so today I would like to know that uh, uh, actually our website is uh, an e-learning website and uh, um, it's ranking well and it's getting the good traffic and uh, actually we want to apply the story branding thing uh, to our website. So for that, like uh, we want to cut down our content in our service pages and uh, uh, in the home page, uh, and we want to put more graphics in it. And uh, let's say, like maybe we cut down the content uh, uh, up to seventy-five percent. And what kind of impact it will show uh, in the ranking and as well as the traffic? I don't know. It's, it, it really depends. Uh, so if, if you're removing content, then obviously we can't rank you for that content. Uh, if you're removing things that are not important for your site, then that's, that's perfectly fine. Uh, if you're removing something that is critical for those pages, then of course, those pages won't be visible for those queries. Uh, so yeah. So it's, it's... Uh, I would like to add that, uh, so uh, we will, uh... Uh, I mean, uh, take the consideration of the keywords, and uh, we will put those keywords uh, in the in the content. And uh, I mean, uh, we want to write uh, in terms of customer perspective. So because of that, like uh, we want to trim down the content and uh, make it very crispy for the uh, uh, the users. So yeah. Uh, so yeah. so my 
my recommendation there, if you're make, looking at trying to make a bigger change, like removing 75% of the content seems like a big change, um, I would take a handful of pages and test it and uh, make the changes there and see how they perform. If they perform OK, then like maybe do the same work on the other pages. Uh, if they don't perform as good as you expect, then maybe try different things out and test that. OK, if they're not uh, working well, if I uh, restore the page again uh, with the same content which I have deleted, so will it rank again? Sure, yeah. I mean, it, it obviously takes a little bit of time for indexing to catch up, uh, but it's, it will be like before. OK, great. And one more question, last question. And uh, actually, in our blog, we upload uh, uh, one article uh, each day. I mean, we publish one article each day. So uh, 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 what do you suggest uh, the best uh, I mean, uh, thing? Uh, I, mean, I mean, to say, like, in terms of uh, content numbers, uh, uh, how many articles we supposed to upload uh, in a week or a month? It depends up to you. Uh, some sites make very okay. few changes and few articles. Others make lots of articles. It's, uh, it really depends on how much content you have available that you can create and what people are looking for. OK, great. And thank you so much. And I appreciate Google for conducting these kind of webinars. And Merry Christmas. Thanks. You too. Martin, I think you had a question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the follow-up question to the change of the internal structure of the domain. Uh, let's say you really change a big thing, like the main navigation, for example. What kind of time frame would you recommend until all the signals have been reprocessed, so to say? Um, I I would assume you would see the the large part of the reprocessing taking place within maybe two or three weeks. Um, in, in general, we try to recrawl all pages uh, within six months. So the, the long tail will take a bit of time to, to be updated. But the kind of the, the pages that we crawl the most, that we think are the most important for your site, they should be updated within a couple of weeks. Uh, so my, my guess is, at least after a month, you should see kind of the effects of a change like that. All right, that's that's great. Thank you. Sure. Hi, John. Hi. Uh, so, uh, which method uh, to choose if we have a category with products for a few months? They are uh, indexing uh, very well. They rank very well, but in one uh, shiny day, uh, the owner uh, uh, delete them or uh, remove them from categories. And what method will be better for us to choose? To no index, canonical, or something to leave them like a blank page? So it, it's a product that you're removing from your site? Is that yeah. Uh, yeah, but the question is for the category, because the category is rank. And so in the list in the category are very much products, but they finish one day. Oh, so you remove the whole category? Yeah. Yeah, all products from category. OK. And I... the category is empty for a few yeah. months. But after a few months, we'll be come back. I, I would just make it 404. 404. Yeah, I, I, I wouldn't try to do anything too tricky there. I, I think if you set it no index, uh, the same thing will happen. If you uh, try to set it canonical to a different category, we'll treat it as a soft 404. Um, so from from that point of view, I think like 404 is is kind of the easiest approach that has the same effect. Okay, and uh, if we get the products a few months after that, uh, we should create new categories. Sure. Yeah. And okay. if you have new internal linking pointing to those category pages, then we we will pick it up. Yeah. yeah of course. And uh, thank you so much. And one more question about uh, the uh, last uh, update. <laughs> uh, I was wondering uh, some, uh, something uh, after the date. Do you think it's uh, reasonable to immediately uh, take some action, or should we wait until it's over? 
because uh, sometimes webmasters trying to change something uh, when uh, the update is rolled out, but I don't know, it's a very smart decision. What is your advice here? I mean, if so, so I think the the core update, I think that's finished rolling out. So yeah. from, from that point of view, it's like it's finished anyway. Uh, but in general, if you have things that you can improve on your website, like why would you wait? Mm -hmm. I, I especially if there's something bigger that you want to improve on your website, then I, it's like there's always some update happening at some point. Uh, so I, I would just make those fixes and improvements and like keep track of them, of course, so that you know a little bit when you, when what happened. But uh, I, I would just make those changes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thanks. And uh, do you think uh, that the website can lose uh, its visibility to recover uh, without as as your specialist uh, intervention intervention sure. uh, in the period between two updates? Sure, it, it's possible. Without yeah, any, I mean, uh, it's like. SEO specialist, you, you can't like pick up a magic wand and kind of make a, a website magically appear. Uh, yeah. It's it's something where, especially when it comes to the core updates, we're we're looking at the relevance of the website overall, and uh, that's something that anyone can take a website and say, oh, I will rewrite the content and I will recreate the website. It doesn't need to be an SEO. I think yeah. there's there's a little bit of a of an effect there that SEOs often know a little bit more of what's happening and what Google might be watching out for. Uh, but anyone can update a website and make it better. Yeah. Thank you so much, John. Sure. Um, let me run through some of the submitted questions. And uh, we, we'll definitely have a bit more time to chat as well afterwards. Uh, but just so that we, we've kind of run through those quickly. Uh, we experience a severe ranking drop. Our domain is only visible for brand searches. All other rankings have nearly completely vanished uh, for now since three weeks. On the other hand, we do not experience any alert in Search Console. Is it possible that the Search Console is a bug uh, so that there are no alerts shown, even if the domain is punished via penalty? Um, so it's always possible that there's a bug in Search Console. I, I mean, that's. It's kind of like computer software. It, uh, it's always possible there. However, I, I would be very surprised if there were a bug, in particular, with regards to the manual actions. So we, we call them manual actions. People externally tend to call them penalties, um, because manual actions are something that like, they just happen all the time, and lots of sites uh, see them. Lots of sites try to fix them. And uh, that's something where if there were a general bug with regards to how we show manual actions, I think lots of people would notice it and complain about that. Um, may I ask a question? Uh, sure. Regarding... sure. So, uh, as you already know the situation. But can you imagine a situation uh, where the rankings are vanished um, and, and the reason for that, So, if it's not a penalty? Yeah. Um, so. I, I don't know exactly the number of weeks, but we recently had a core algorithm update. And that might map into that time frame that you're, you're looking at there. And with the core algorithm updates, uh, we try to improve the way that we understand relevance in the search results. And with that, it can happen that a website becomes suddenly less visible and significantly less visible in some cases even uh, than it was before. And it's not that there's a kind of something that you're explicitly doing wrong or an error or something on your website. It's more our systems feel that this is the, the way that we should show websites in search now. Okay. And uh, we, we have a blog post about the core algorithm updates. So I, I would go through that. Um, uh, there... oh, sorry, we already checked this. The, uh, that was our first thought. So it happened on around the 25th, uh, 24th, 25th of November. So we are pretty sure it's not the core update. OK. Um, I mean, there, there are also lots of other changes that can happen in search. Uh, so it, it can certainly happen that our algorithms are picking something up on your site and reacting to that. Um, if, if it's not That's an date, uh, I can provide another information. So there was an incident. So a link network, uh, a link 
Building Network, so ein Illegal, also so ein Fraud Network, was pointing on 300 domains, which were in my company's portfolio. So they were hosted on our own servers. Uh, and by linking from the link network to our domains, um, those domains got indexed and they all had a redirect to uh, our main company page. So that's, is that a hint as well, which can help to clarify it? Usually, something like that wouldn't be a problem for us. Because if, if it were a problem, we would flag that as a manual action, and you would see that in Search Console. Yeah. And it's, yeah. It's, it's the servers are, so the servers of, so it's, it's a huge company. And the servers from my company, that's something like the daughter of the big company, they are hosted on the same server. So the traffic from the index URLs um, pointing on our domain are, are on the same server. So the, that's why I mentioned it's not uh, um, taken into respect as spam, or, or it is taken uh, into respect as spam because they are hosted on our own servers. So if, if they are... Um, Foreign uh, or servers which are not on our, on, on, under our control, this spam attack wouldn't be that, uh, or would not have those um, consequences. Yeah, I don't know. Um, I my general feeling is we would still be able to deal with that normally, um, but it it sounds like you have a very unique situation. So that's something where I, I would also maybe point at the, the help forum, um, maybe, maybe post there. Uh, you can also drop your URL here in the chat, and I can, I can take a quick look afterwards. I, I can't make any promises with regards to uh, like what we can do there, but uh, I'm, I'm happy to kind of take a quick look to see that things are kind of working as expected. I just get to, uh, I need to ask someone if I can put our URL, but I want to. Sure, sure. No All problem. Right. Thank you. OK. All right. Um, let me run through some of the other submitted questions so that we get a few of those covered. Uh, during the core update rollout, is, is it like the quality of the website is calculated from the overall site signals, and then this site quality score is propagated to every page gradually, page by page? Uh, is it possible that some pages drop and some pages surge, and the overall traffic to the domain remains the same? Uh, it, like When we try to understand the relevance of a website, on the one hand, we try to look at the bigger picture of the website. Uh, but we do also look at smaller parts of a website. So it can certainly happen that some things go up, some things go down. And on average, across the domain, you will see some change, or maybe it'll even out, even in, in kind of weird uh, coincidental ca cases. Uh, so that's certainly possible, the way that you're seeing things there. And uh, it's also that there are always, always a lot of different things that come out uh, uh, with regards to search. And some are a little bit more focused on the domain or on a bigger picture of the website. Some are focused more on smaller parts of a website. Uh, so even outside of a core update, you might see these shifts across some parts of your site and other parts going up, some parts going down. When do you bring back the request indexing tool? So I, I don't know. So we, we will see. I, I know that uh, lots of people want it, and uh, the Search Console team is pretty close uh, to kind of getting that back lined up. Um, I don't know what the timing there will be. It's like there is like some chance that we might still get it this year, though it's is getting really tight. Uh, from a ranking standpoint, if Core Web Vitals use real user data, I think we talked about this briefly before. Uh, in March, your big mobile update will come. If we are ranking well at the moment on mobile, can that change with the mobile update? Um, for example, our internal linking is basically not existent on mobile. Our mobile navigation menu is blocked for the crawler currently. How much uh, is our desktop page actually influencing the rankings on mobile? So I didn't take a look at your specific site. But if your site is already shifted over to mobile-first indexing, then you will not see any changes in, in March when we shift the rest of the web over. Uh, because we're already using the mobile version of your site for indexing there. Uh, and for the largest part, we have shifted over most websites. Uh, so that's something where um, 
if we've shifted it over, you're not going to see any changes. If we haven't shifted your site over to mobile-first indexing, uh, then that does mean that, uh, on the one hand, our systems are not sure if your site will work well with mobile-first indexing. And if your site still doesn't work well with mobile-first indexing in March, then we will pick whatever mobile content you have and index that, which might be worse than your site is now. Uh, with regards to indexing. Uh, so that's something where, depending on your case, uh, you might see changes or you might not see changes. Um, PageSpeed Core Web Vitals vision, uh, question, uh, does the origin summary include only index pages or the domain experience? Uh, so I don't know offhand how the, the core or how the, the the crux the Chrome user experience report data is is collected with regards to kind of like what what goes into the origin summary or not, uh, but there is fairly detailed documentation on the Chrome user experience uh, report data, uh, so I would double check that there. Uh, I still get alerts from an old subdomain that I moved away many years in Search Console. I'm concerned that it's affecting my ranking with the current and active domain. Should I fix these errors? Uh, probably not. So Search and Search Console, they keep track of things for a really, really long time. And it can happen that you move to a different domain and the old domain still exists. Maybe there's no hosting there anymore in the meantime. And if anything happens where we try to crawl a page and find errors, then we will flag that in Search Console. Uh, but that doesn't mean that there's any effect on your current site uh, with regards to Search. So for, for the most part, if you've moved away many years ago and something gets flagged on the old domain, then like, you can just ignore that. Uh, I want to split a website into two websites. I want to keep some pages and posts on the current domain, but the pages and posts I want to move to a separate website. Uh, it will keep the same branding, structure, basically everything. I just want to separate visitors and make two websites easier for them. Uh, except for 301, redirection for the move pages. Is there anything else I should keep in mind to do in order to maintain the website reputation and not lose ranking of those migrated pages? Uh, so I, I think the, the redirects are really the, the primary thing that you should focus on. But any time that you split or you merge websites, the end result is really hard to determine ahead of time. And it can be that things are better. It can also be that things are worse overall. Uh, so in particular, if you're taking a website and you're splitting it up into lots of small pieces, like lots of pieces and not just two, then it can happen that all of those pieces individually are just kind of like OK from a quality point of view, but not good enough to compete in a competitive environment. Uh, so in particular, if you're active in a very competitive area and you split things off into smaller pieces, then it might be harder for us to rank those. Whereas if you combine them, it might be easier for us to rank those. On the other hand, if it's a less competitive area, then it's very possible that we'll just index all of those versions and show those appropriately in the search results. So that's something where it's, it's really hard to determine ahead of time what the SEO effect will be. And uh, because of that, I would recommend doing this kind of a split or merging uh, primarily then when you have really, really strong business reasons to actually do that. Uh, if you really know your users, are annoyed if you have both of these things on the same website, and maybe they convert first uh, because of that, uh, then that's something where I'd say, well, maybe it makes sense to split these off. Uh, but if you're just trying to tweak things slightly and you don't expect a big effect from your user side, then by doing this kind of splitting off, my suspicion is that overall you will be a little bit worse situation than before. Uh, when will Search Console allow disavow files submitted to domain verified sites and allow all four versions to apply uh, at the same time? Um, we don't want to do it four times. I, I don't know. Uh, I think that's, that's on the Search Console list uh, of things to do. Uh, in particular, when they rolled out the new disavow feature, we did bring them that feedback because it also came from folks like you. 
Uh, so I don't know what, what the timing there will be. Uh, the good part, I guess, here is that it's for, for the most part, it's really rare that you have to do a disavow uh, file submission. So if, if you do this like in an extreme case once a month and you have to do it four times rather than one time, it's, like, it's not a ton of time saved. Uh, on the other hand, if you're doing this daily, then probably you're focusing on things that don't have as strong effect as you'd expect. Uh, I'm starting my new website, and I'm making it accessible for people with disabilities. My question is, how can we include animation and videos and infographics uh, if I want to make it accessible? Uh, second, does accessibility make for trouble when it comes to indexing? Um, so I don't have a lot of um, expert uh, advice with regards to accessibility. Uh, I don't have a lot of background knowledge there. So it's hard for me to say what, what you should really focus on there. Um, but there are definitely experts out there who can help you to figure that out. Uh, with regards to indexing, usually I find that if you make a website uh, more accessible, uh, that it actually becomes better for search. Because usually that means you don't just have one image, and Google has to figure out what this image means. But rather, you have the image, and you have an alt attribute for the image, and you give more details about the image. And all of that makes it easier for us to understand what your site is about. Uh, so that's something where usually, with regards to crawling and indexing, making things more accessible is more of a positive effect rather than a negative one. Um, I, uh, should I separate my e-commerce from my main website? What's the guideline, if any? Uh, would it be better for SEO? Um, you, you can do it e either way. So some, some sites have a blog and an e-commerce site on the same domain. Some split that off into multiple domains. Uh, it's essentially possible for you to do that in any, any particular setup. Uh, so that's something where I would focus more on what works well for you, what works well for tracking, for an analytics purposes, and then go from there. Uh, I'm very novice, but have managed my website this past year. I'm really having difficulty understanding Search Console with regards to my accounts. Looks like everyone here is more experts. Is there a more appropriate Google Forum? Um, I would probably go to the Search uh, Central Help Forum. I, I keep saying that today. I don't know. Uh, it seems like it's, it, it's usually a good place to go with regards to these general questions, like how do I verify my site? How do I get things started and get set up with regards to Search? Uh, there are lots of really smart and friendly people there. So I, I would tend to go there and uh, Post your details there, like the URLs that you have for your website, so that someone can take a look and say, oh, it's like you need to put your meta tag here, or you need to do this in your WordPress, or whatever you're using. Um, how many articles are needed for Google Discover to find our site suitable? I don't think there's any limit with regards to Discover. Um, however, the Discover content policies are a little bit different than web search. And what we focus on for Discover is a little bit different than just general web search. So I would check out the content guidelines for Discover and see how you can perhaps tweak your content to make it more suitable for Discover. And um, then keep working on that. I think Discover is, is a really fascinating thing because it uh, shows your website to people that are not actively looking for it. But on the other hand, that also means it's really hard to create content specifically for Discover, because you don't know what people are not searching for where your site could be shown. Uh, so it's a bit kind of like it, it's a tricky, tricky place. But uh, I, I think it's really cool. Um, whew, OK. More and more questions. Uh, maybe I'll just switch back to questions from you all uh, to kind of close things out. So I, I've dropped you the URL in the chat. OK. Cool. Um, I'll copy that out and uh, take a look at that uh, later on. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Sure. Uh, John, regarding, so regarding Discover, um, 
does it first of all is there anything new that the discover team is likely to come up with uh, come out with uh, anytime soon in terms of like more recommendations or maybe more insights of what people uh especially people who had traffic from discover and now they don't maybe some insights into what they can do to to improve yeah i i don't have any idea of timing so that's like always tricky to come and say like what will happen in the future it's like i i really don't know what what the timings are there uh, i i do know the discover team cares a lot about uh, people who who are trying to get content visible in discover and uh, they'd like to make it a little bit easier to understand what is happening there so it's it's certainly possible that some things will will come out that have a little bit more information or some more tips on it on what you could be doing differently uh, but I I don't know what the the specific plans are there or timelines would be. Uh, so you mentioned uh, in one of the previous hangouts that, um, as I mentioned, we've been working with a publisher that um, uh, has been removed from Discover in May, and we kept uh, you know making sure that the new content that they publish uh, is according to your Discover policies, and they improve the content and overall user experience as well. Um, uh, you, you mentioned that uh, Google kind of, in, including Discover, requires quite a bit of time to kind of process all of these changes. Even if uh, the content is indexed, there's my still, we might still need some time until kind of Google understands that, OK, so this is a good enough quality website to be included in Discover again. Uh, and you mentioned a month is, especially for large websites, a month is a kind of a small amount of time. What would you think like as an appropriate amount of time to wait? I don't know. Uh, I mean, it's it's tricky on on the the one hand with regards to bigger quality changes of, on a website. Uh, so that's so it's, it's really hard to say there. And uh, on top of that. Um, I, I don't know in particular how, how Discover like pulls all of that information together. Uh, right. so, so for search, I, I would guess like a large site, a couple of months should give us time to understand it a little bit better. I don't know if Discover would do anything past that or would take longer. OK, but so definitely a month is too little to kind of yeah. see a significant impact. So I'm guessing two, three, four months and beyond. Yeah, yeah. is a more appropriate time to uh, okay. And uh, I know you mentioned that with Discover, the the new content, the fresh content, is has a heavier weight in terms of how you know Discover calculates everything. Uh, so just to confirm that it's not really required to kind of go back months or years to kind of update that old content and you know update it yeah i i see it as something that's not particular to discover itself but more with regards to how we understand websites and the the kind of website that you you're kind of like talking about sounds like something where you're generally creating new content all the time Right. Uh, that means within your website, when we understand your site structure, we focus essentially on the newer content and under on the main category sections, for example, of a website. Uh, which means that overall, we would automatically, for indexing, kind of focus more on that newer content because it's just very prominently linked within your website. You're giving it a lot of weight. Uh, so regardless of discover or just search in general, uh, if if you're constantly creating new content, then that's kind of where we will shift our, our focus uh, over time. So it's uh, it's not the case that the old content might pull everything, you know, especially if the site has been online for like you know five years or something like that. It's not like these four and a half years are pulling down the last six months of I, new I mean, best content. I mean, it really depends on, on your website. And that's something where if you look at the, the traffic from search and the analytics traffic, uh, you can probably make guesses on which parts of your site are critical uh, for, for your site. Uh, so 
I, I could, for example, imagine a situation where you have a news type website where we focus on news, but you also have a, a reference section somewhere. And the reference section is really important because it's like you're the only reference site for that kind of content. Uh, then we would say, well, this reference part is really important, but there's also a news part. And we try to find kind of like a, a balance between those two parts. On the other hand, if it's purely a news website and we can purely focus on the new content, and that's really clear when we crawl and index your site, that's clear kind of from all of the signals that we get, then like obviously we'll focus on the news part. OK, for search, I, I'm guessing like for Discover, these reference sections, they might not be as relevant when well, calculating things. I mean, it, it kind of depends on what, what kind of things you're focusing on. So if you're looking at an overall quality issue with regards mm -hmm. to your website, and you have kind of this reference part that's really important for your website but is really low quality, then we will still balance that low quality part with your newer quality news, uh, news content and try to find some, some middle ground there with regards to how we understand the quality of your website overall. Um, but it, it really kind of depends on, on your website. And it's not so trivial to just say, oh, we will take a look at all the Search Console traffic and impressions kind of thing. It's like we, we try to figure out what, what is important for the site overall. Right, right. OK, OK, got it. Sure. All right. Any more questions from anyone? Now hey, question. John. Hey, Hi. Any question? Sure. <laughs> um, actually, it's regarding a, a website uh, schemas. Uh, how it's important uh, for website? Is it really useful for uh, increase uh, website visibility in a uh, search engine or uh, help to rank mm -hmm. higher? It, it doesn't change the ranking. Um, it changes uh, how we show the, the pages in the search results. So it's not that you will rank higher if you add structured data. But if you do have structured data that we can use for rich results types, then we will perhaps show that in the search results. So for example, if you add uh, FAQ markup, to your pages, and we understand we can show that for your site, then we will show that in the search results. And maybe that'll be more visible for your website, and maybe that'll attract more users to your site overall. Uh, but it doesn't change the ranking of, of those pages. OK, OK. Actually, I have implemented uh, schemas overall all, all websites. And uh, they all are visible in uh, search engines. Uh, cool. OK. And yeah. Uh, one more question. Uh, Sometimes website, uh, uh, overall website uh, perform, right? Uh, uh, all keywords are in the top 10. And uh, after uh, uh, two weeks, overall website drop, keyword ranking drop. Then uh, what we can, uh, uh, what, uh, what issue? Uh, I have no words about this. I hope you understand. Yeah. It's, it's really hard to say. So uh, we, we have a, a document in the, the Help Center specifically for, I think, my, my site's ranking dropped or my, my page's visibility dropped, something like that. And it goes through a number of the issues that could be playing a role there. Uh, with regards to maybe technical issues that you can double check, and also some tips with regards to the overall quality. Uh, but in general, even if you have all of the technical things set up correctly, it can happen. And it's, it's very normal that uh, things will go up in ranking and things will go down in ranking over time. Uh, so just because a page is no longer ranking as well as it was before. It doesn't necessarily mean that there's something wrong with the page. It might just be it's like maybe there are other pages that we should show in search. Maybe we just like have trouble understanding the relevance of the page, uh, focusing the page more on the kind of content that you want to have it visible for. All of these things can play a bit of a role. Oh, OK, OK, sir. Um, actually, um... According to all Google guidelines, 
uh, I have make a document and uh, recently uh, last month I have launched a new website it's regarding a hoverboard and uh, can you imagine uh, after one and half month uh, overall website are ranked higher and the keywords are in top 10 fresh new website yeah and i got good traffic daily um, around uh, uh, 2000 to 20 uh, 2500 yeah that's that sounds good. Yeah, I mean, yeah. So, sometimes if you overall get everything optimized, overall web, overall web, website optimized, um, all our Google guidelines, Google guidelines. Cool, excellent, excellent, really cool. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, on the one hand, the technical things are are certainly things to watch out for, um, but it's also it's not guaranteed that you will be successful just because you follow the technical guidelines. So sometimes you also have to kind of like have, have a sense of what will be important or what, uh, what areas are maybe not covered so well at the moment that we can help cover. Uh, so it's like, yeah, cool. All right. Um, let me just pause the recording here. We, we can stick around a little bit longer if any of you want. And, uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I think this is the, the last Office Hours Hangout for this year. So thank you all for, for joining all of these Hangouts. Thanks for all of these questions along the way. Um, I hope you found these useful. We'll certainly be doing more of these next year as well. I think Martin is doing one for JavaScript next week, so it's not completely closed. I don't know how he does it, like over almost over the holidays. Uh, we'll see. Um, but we'll definitely have more of these lined up uh, next year. So wish you all happy holidays, and uh, see you next year in that case. Well, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Christmas. Merry Christmas. See ya. Bye.